All right, we'll go ahead and get started. I'll switch over my presentation. So, uh, today we'll be talking about Module 5, uh, which is centered on uh, the concepts of genetic programming and algorithms. So some pretty interesting stuff. Uh, been around for a while. Uh, I recall back whenever I was uh, completing my master's and uh, entering a, or considering entering a doctoral program, one of the, the instructors I spoke with at that institution was very excited about them. At the time, I was somewhat ignorant of the facts, uh, so wasn't all that familiar with them. Uh, I've grown to know more about them, so uh, it is, is quite interesting. So, uh, jumping into what are they? Uh, so, in this module, you're going to uh, have the opportunity uh, to master applying genetic programming and genetic algorithms as a way of handling large data sets. Um, and in particular, this is still in that kind of um, uh, world where we have to settle for good enough, an approximation, uh, uh, something that may not be as precise as maybe what you might accomplish with a big data approach, uh, but it is something that may be appropriate depending upon the nature of the thing that you're trying to study. So uh, at the end of this, you're going to be able to produce examples of genetic algorithms and programs. You'll be able to design an appropriate data structure for using them. Uh, and then you'll talk about the an appropriate performance function in a real world problem. And we'll talk about what performance functions are here in a moment. So taking a step back, what are genetic algorithms uh, and, and why should you care? So the basic idea is that they're inspired as you might expect, uh, from uh, the Darwin's theory of evolution. The idea being that it's a way of potentially uh, having something that uh, is selected for continuation based upon how well it's doing with a certain amount of randomness thrown in. So the basic idea here is that genetic programs obviously are implementations of genetic algorithms and they uh, it's an exploratory uh, process, an exploratory process uh, that basically means that, that it's looking for an answer. It's a search of sorts um, that is based upon Darwin's theory of natural evolution. It's a heuristic search. And what that means is that it's a rule of thumb based search. Uh, it is using guesses uh, and approaches that might approximate the actual best answer, but it doesn't necessarily guarantee it. Um, Darwin postulated uh, that basically the fittest uh, to spawn, uh, the, the survival of the fittest will spawn in the next generation, potentially carrying on those genetic uh, abnormalities that were made that particular uh, generation successful. So the idea is that there's a certain amount of randomness uh, and you consider how well that randomness does against the fitness function, the determination of what is good. Uh, and then uh, you remove those that don't make the cut, so to speak, uh, and then you, you do it again, right? So uh, and, and essentially the idea here is that any unfit traits would eventually be eliminated from the gene pool through attrition. So basically they would die off is the thinking. So if you're in a world where having a long beak is important and you, you're born with a short feet, your odds of living aren't that great. Your odds of reproducing even smaller. That's the idea. So uh, genetic algorithms use many of the same terms and, and phases as uh, evolutionary genetics. Uh, and the, the phases involve producing an initial population. You define a fit dysfunction. You select the parents. You make a crossover. And then there's some mutation. Uh, and, and it's going to essentially repeat. So your initial population, uh, that is the the individuals or, or things that begin at, at the beginning when you're dealing with a particular problem. Uh, a set of parameters referred to as genes is what constitutes an individual. So a collection of genes makes up an individual. Uh, a chromosome is created from a string of these genes. So you have the genes that are represented as a chromosome. Binary values are usually used to represent a set of genes uh, that each member possesses. So we map that string of genes into some sort of binary representation. Uh, and then uh, this action is called encoding uh, the genes in, genes in a chromosome. So those are then are the first <coughs> uh, sort of terminology. So selection is to determine if a member is likely to be selected for rep uh, reproduction. A fitness function uh, provides a fitness weight or score uh, as compared to uh, other members. So it's a stack rank. Uh, those that do the best will make the cut. 
uh, this is important because the individuals need to uh, be fit in order to solve the problem. So the basic idea is that if, uh, if it's not getting better, you don't want to include it. Uh, you score them. So a score is based upon uh, the, it's used to determine if somebody uh, is selected for reproduction and it's basically through their fitness score. The higher scoring members can pass their genes on to the, the next generation. Uh, better fit individuals will have a higher likelihood of survival. There is a certain amount of randomness involved to make this all work. So you have a random crossover point as chosen for each parent. Uh, this crossover creates a new individual who shares genes from both parents. Uh, this is most uh, important phase in the genetic algorithm. This is where you're taking uh, two of the ones that have the higher level fitness functions and combining them. So taking what made them there uh, and mixing them together in a somewhat random way and, and then to, to determine the offspring. And the offspring are created by exchanging the genes of the parents among themselves uh, until basically you you reach, uh, until the crossover point is reached. So until you reach the crossover point. So creation and termination. As each offspring is created, some of its genes could mutate, uh, which provides a significant uh, difference compared to its previous generation. Uh, so the idea here is that whenever you're producing a new generation, it's a combination of the genes from the previous uh, iteration with a certain amount of mutation going on. And eventually uh, it terminates if there is no significant difference in the offspring from one generation to another. So you reach some point of essentially diminishing return. There's nothing new happening, so the algorithm stops. Um, so the idea would be you've reached as good as it's going to get. So the general flow, uh, we start off, we create our, our initial population, and this is just a graphical representation of what we just talked through. So you create that initial population, uh, you calculate a fitness function for each individual uh, in the population. You go through and do a selection step, then you do some crossover, some mutation, and then again, you calculate the fitness function of the new uh, generation, so the new individuals in that generation, and then you determine have you reached the point of, of termination? Can you stop? Uh, if you have, then you're good. You choose uh, the individual with the highest fitness value, and, and that is essentially your solution. Uh, if, if it's not good enough, uh, then, or uh, there are still things that are changing, uh, then you keep going, right? So the stopping conditions typically are things like uh, you've reached a, a level, a, a plateau, or uh, you've reached a, a level where there's no more improvement uh, in the, the fitness functions, or you may do it at the point that you reach some degree of, of accuracy. <clears throat> so pseudocode of this process uh, in a high level, uh, you, you start, uh, you generate the initial population and compute uh, the fitness, uh, you repeat uh, the process of doing a selection, uh, a crossover, a mutation, uh, and that's where the weak individual is replaced by a newer, stronger offspring. Uh, and then you compute the fitness function uh, until uh, you have converged. So the fitness individual, the fittest individual is created uh, and then you stop. So that's the basic uh, uh, pseudocode of one of these approaches. Stepping through one of these examples, and I've recently reorganized my hard drive. So hopefully this works nicely and it looks like it's going to. Uh, so the idea here, uh, and this is taken from um, uh, Geeks for Geeks, and it talks about genetic algorithms, uh, and this is a, a pretty simple approach. Uh, the genes, in this case, is the alphabet. Uh, so pretty much anything that is in uh, the character set, uh, printable character set, is considered an ASCII character set, basically, a simplistic version of it. And then we have a target that we're trying to reach, right? Uh, so... Uh, we'll start off, our population size is initially 100. Uh, we have the valid genes that may be selected, and we have a target that we're trying to reach. In this case, we're looking for I love geeks for geeks. Uh, we have this concept of an individual. This is something that is a part of the population. Uh, it has chromosomes, and it has a fitness function. The fitness function is down a little further. We'll talk about it in a minute. It also has the ability to, to mutate its genes. Uh, and that's doing it through uh, basically random choice of the genes. Uh, and then uh, it, uh, you also have the mapping to create the chromosome um, 
uh, from a string of genes uh, and then mate uh, with another individual uh, and then producing child chromosomes based upon essentially picking from uh, both of the, the, the chromosomes of the uh, parents in a random fashion uh, and uh, basically if the probability is less than 0 0.45 add it to it uh, if it's less than from uh, from one parent if it's less than 90 uh, so it didn't hit that or, or uh, you add it from the other uh, and basically you're going to return from all of that the genes of the child uh, the fitness function is basically determining how close we are to the target uh, and so if it's if it's not fit at all at zero if it matches every one it'll be the length of that string that we're targeting so whatever the length of that is I'll go ahead and create that class and create the class and then uh, the the main function uh, which is basically in here uh, we start off with, and this was just going through the class earlier, which we just stepped through. So you, you have your class, but there's going to be a loop uh, involved. And so in that sense, it's you can almost think of this as being a Markov process, right? Because there is uh, randomness going on and there is a loop. It kind of fits that definition, a specialized case of it, right? Um, where the, 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 the sample... Uh, is or the population is being used to sample from is increasing by uh, adding to it at each one of the, the iterations. So we start off by uh, declaring a, a global uh, population size. We start off with the current generation. We say if we found it or not. So we start off by saying, no, we haven't found uh, the, the target. Uh, and then we have our population. Uh, and then we're basically going to go and create uh, a, our initial population. Uh, using uh, uh, some randomness to essentially uh, create the gene genome for each one of the individuals and add them to it up to the size of the population. Then we're going to loop until we find our solution. Uh, so this is assuming convergence. There's no other terminating condition. Um, so the idea here is we uh, create it uh, and we order it by the fitness function. And then we take... Um, uh, if it happens to be one that is, uh, uh, you find something that is the best, then you're done. Uh, and it looks like the fitness function actually is the opposite of what I said. So it's the biggest number and zero is the most fit is what the less than or equal to zero looks like. That's what that's saying. Then you're, uh, if you don't find it, uh, then you keep going. You create the next generation uh, by taking the current population size, multiplying it by 10 and dividing it by 100. Uh, basically, uh, by getting rid of uh, uh, the first um, 10 percent, so you're going to keep 10 percent of the population uh, of the next generation uh, goes into the next generation. So not real good if you're not performing well. 90 percent of you is, is going to drop out. So you have to create each time through the top 10 percent uh, get, get saved, the bottom 90 get culled you uh, generate another of those 10 percent that make it you generate another generation and you go again uh, and score it and so on so the end result uh, as we run it is here is we start off uh, with the first generation the best in that uh, generation is 18 uh, and that means that it didn't really do very well at all then uh, it does a little better uh, on the next generation, one of the characters matches, then nothing happens on the third generation. But the fourth generation, uh, we're up to, to two things matching. So the fitness is improved uh, from 18 to 16. Then another two match uh, uh, in the next generation. Uh, so generation five, generation six, no real improvement. Generation seven, we get another character. Uh, looks like the GE here and then uh, EKS out here. Um, and then we get of and through here, so we drop down to to uh, 12, uh, then 11, uh, then nothing really happens uh, too terribly exciting here. Uh, the, we've still got some random numbers at the beginning, uh, but then eventually we get to the place where you're down to, to the fitness is 3 uh, in generation 25 or so, uh, and then again, 
it gets better through here because we're each generation we're guaranteed to do as well as we did before because we're keeping that top 10 percent right uh so that's why how this whole thing kind of reaches a convergence uh, uh so and eventually it just kind of beats it into submission uh and we get down to where we've got a fitness of two and then eventually uh, we find another one uh, so uh, we went from we found uh, wasn't that one here we found the I uh, is the first uh, gene that does well we keep those around and then uh, finally we get to the fitness of zero so the, the, the we find the optimal solution by exhaustively to some extent checking it but you're not exactly you're not trying all possible characters in all possible slots you're rolling the dice each time through uh, picking up the the top 10 percent uh, then taking those to produce mutations and then try that again and so on so you're basically ensuring that you don't get any worse by talk taking uh, the top 10 percent and then you're uh, searching uh, across the remaining search space with that remaining uh, randomization We'll take a look at another. Um, bear with me for one moment. I, I need to uh, grab a drink. I've uh, been under the weather, as I mentioned in an announcement. My throat is telling me I've been talking way too much. This is an example using uh, uh, a genetic algorithm framework called DEEP. Uh, DEEP is uh, uh, the first thing you want to do if you're doing this is make sure you install it. This is coming out of an O'Reilly uh, book, out of your O'Reilly uh, environment, uh, hands-on genetic algorithms. Pretty good if you actually care about this stuff. Uh, it's cool technology. Might want to dig into it a little bit. Uh, so what we're doing here is, is kicking off uh, uh, pip install deep. It's already installed, uh, as is NumPy, so we don't have to do anything. Your next step is to import it. Uh, so what, what this is doing for you, what Deep is doing is similar to what you might think of as uh, like a, a neural network framework does for you. It's putting all the frameworks in place so that uh, you can focus on the problem rather than writing all that code that we saw in the last example. So in this case, uh, we go ahead and do some uh, uh, declare uh, uh, a, the length of a bit string to be optimized. So what is the string we're looking at? We talk about the popu uh, population size, the crossover, mutation, and the maximum number of generations that are going to be used. Uh, this is a common trick you'll see is to use uh, set the seed of a random number generator to produce reproducible runs. If you don't set the seed, the clock uh, tick count is going to be used instead, uh, which means each time you run the program, you'll get different results. Might be what you want most of the time not necessarily what you want whenever you're trying to do a demo or have an example because you want to be able to talk about the results and the results will differ each time if you do that. So uh, this this concept here is that we use uh, a, a series of, uh, of tools, in this case a toolbox, and we register zero or one uh, as a, 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 one of the tools we're going to be using. Uh, we create uh, a fitness max, uh, which is uh, the kind of the the maximization strategy. So we're going to maximize fitness, not minimize. Um, then we create an individual, uh, and the individual uh, is associated with a, a fitness uh, uh, max or, or a fitness strategy. Next, you're going to go through and actually create an individual. So you have an individual creator. Uh, and we use that to essentially enable us to create both the individual po or the initial population as well as on each iteration. Uh, and so your next thing you're going to do is go into the, the population creator, and it's using that individual creator that we talked about a moment ago. And then uh, we're uh, doing our, our fitness calculation. Uh, and deep uses the term evaluation. So it's an evaluation function or a fitness function. Uh, in this case, uh, we're using one called uh, one max fitness that computes uh, the number of ones in an individual. So you're trying to turn all the bits on, uh, so to speak. We register the evaluate. Uh, so we're saying that one max fitness is how we want to use it. 
uh, and then we uh, do a select, a, a mate, uh, and a mutate. Uh, so we're basically following those same steps that we talked about along the way. Uh, we create our initial population, and we have a, a, a generations counter. Uh, then we have uh, the fitness of each individual in the population. Then we can loop uh, through that population uh, and essentially calculate the, the fitness for each individual. Uh, and then uh, we extract the fitness values for all the individuals. And then we're going to actually start doing our, our main loop. So we've created our initial population, and we've essentially calculated the fitness for each uh, individual in that population. So then what we're saying here is, and this is probably a little better than the last example we had, there's two terminated conditions to this loop. One is going to be um, you essentially find it, or the other is you don't find it after so many generations. And inside of that, what we're going to do is... Uh, Trying to see if it actually ran. No, it did not. Kick that off. So to dig into to what this is doing, um, back up to the top. So this is the main part of the thing where we go through and we iterate until we find either the something that hits it uh, or we 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 exhaust our search space or our, our number of times we're willing to look, right? So the first thing we do is increase the counter. That's enabling us to terminate without running forever because you may not reach convergence on some of these things. Uh, then we calculate the offspring, uh, do some cloning, uh, do some, uh, some random crossover and mating, uh, do some mutation, uh, and then we're going to calculate the, the individual uh, uh, fitness scores again, or fitness values. Then we're going to prune uh, and essentially call those that don't make the cut uh, and then calculate, figure out who the best is in the population and determine if we're there or not. And it looks like uh, we... I'm trying to see if it actually finds it. Uh, it does find the, the max fitness of 100, so all the bits are on. Uh, and it did so in 40 generations. So that's the same basic concept. Uh, does a little bit more for you using the approach uh, to take a look at uh, how it did it. Uh, the, the green curve is kind of your, um, uh, I believe, the ideal, uh, the mean, the average of the fitness. Uh, and the other is the max values of the fitness, so red. So you can see uh, that as we get out here, the, the one that hit the 100 was kind of a peak that went up. Uh, not not as many of them got it necessarily, but in general the populations get better, and that's because you're pruning it. You're you're removing those that aren't doing as well. So that is an example of using uh, uh, deep to do uh, genetic uh, algorithms. Let's see if this works again. So this is an example uh, from Kaggle uh, of using uh, of addressing Titanic using uh, Deep, uh, and it's taken from this uh, Kaggle uh, uh, link here. So you can, if you're interested um, in learning more about Deep, this is the place to go look. Uh, so start off with this, and has a link to Deep.org. deep.readthedocs.io, sorry, deep.org. Uh, so this will basically let you know uh, how to do this inside of. So uh, all this is doing is taking what that says and running it inside of a notebook. So as, you're, as you are well familiar, uh, the Titanic data set has been studied quite a bit, trying to figure out who's going to survive and who's going to die uh, based upon um, the, uh, the attributes that are present. Uh, and so... Uh, we have 891 entries uh, in the train and 418 in the test, in the test data set. So there are 10 columns uh, in train, that's because you, uh, uh, and then and nine in, in the, the test. So 
uh, you can go get the data. Uh, and then, let's see if this is going to work, because I did, did move things around. And hopefully, yes, it did. Good. So uh, what we've done here is load in uh, the, the uh, train and test data sets, uh, train, and then test. And the key thing you'll see, uh, the difference is that the test uh, set doesn't have, doesn't seem to have the, uh, the target. Uh, so we can take a look at it, take a look at the data dictionary, do some data exploration, uh, survived uh, distributions based upon uh, class and, and so on, an important part. But if you've dealt with Titanic, you've seen all this before. Uh, and so here we're gonna go through uh, cleaning up, doing some feature engineering, uh, doing things like uh, mapping uh, titles uh, to uh, consistent naming, uh, and then doing a count of those, because you can see uh, there's uh, lots of uh, uh, MS and, uh, and so on, MISS and MS and so on. So what this is doing is mapping MS to MRS uh, MR to MR uh, and Miss to Miss uh, and Lady to Royalty, uh, uh, Don, Sir, Doctor, or, or Don, Sir, and so on to uh, to Royalty, Officer, based upon ignoring the various types of Officer, and so on. So after having done that, it's reduced the different values of those features, uh, and so we can then take a look at the uh, the sex, the title, and the passenger class. Uh, and then we can basically fill in uh, anything that is, is null uh, with the, the mean. So we're basically uh, coming up with an approximation uh, for things that are in similar uh, classes and titles and groups. Uh, and then going through uh, doing a bit more engineering taking an additional look at the data. So we're getting down finally to, to modeling it in deep. Uh, so we start off by doing some imports, uh, algorithm-based creator tools and GP uh, from uh, deep, uh, and then NumPy, uh, math, random, and operator. Uh, we start off by uh, creating Sorry, by defining a function that is uh, essentially uh, uh, creating an instance of, of deep, uh, we have some inputs uh, and outputs uh, that we're interested in. Uh, we come up with some functions that are going to help us out. Uh, then we go through uh, and declare um, uh, the primitives, uh, do some uh, operators that we're doing to them. And what we're, we're renaming some arguments uh, so that uh, arg0 is x1 and through arg25 is x26. Then we calculate, um, uh, or we have a, a, a fitness that we're using for the base, uh, and then uh, a primitive tree uh, that we're creating for the, the individuals, for the general population. Uh, then uh, we go through and talk about some expressions, uh, come up with the individual population and compile steps, uh, then we define a function for um, basically it looks like an expression uh, uh, to turn the transform the expression tree into a callable function. So we have an expression tree that we're using to calculate uh, and so on. So it's basically turning an expression tree into a, a function. Then we have our evaluation, our select mate, ex, uh, mutate, uh, mate, mutate again. Uh, sort of uh, operators that we're doing, set a, a predefined random seed, create our initial population of 300. Uh, the Hall of Fame uh, is apparently the top of each individual generation, I would believe. Then we have our, our fitness uh, and our uh, the size of, of the, and so on that we're going to use. So uh, some helpers here to help us come up with a our fitness uh, values and to determine the size of the population. Uh, we calculate some stats. 
uh, and then compile it. Come up with uh, uh, an output that basically is, uh, looks like a, um, it's a calculation to do some exponential notation or exponential transformations. Come up with our, our train and test data sets. Uh, we turn things into floats. Um, we create an instance of our, our, our deep that we defined up in the function above. Uh, come up with the number of epochs that we're going to let it run, so the number of generations. Um, and basically, each time through, uh, we will, well, we're letting it know that uh, survived is important, uh, but we're going to get rid of it initially uh, so that we don't uh, let it uh, get us. So we're saving uh, it off to itself. Uh, and then uh, we have our predictions. Uh, then we use scikit-learn uh, metrics to calculate the accuracy, um, and so on. So I'll go ahead and kick this off. And so on each generation, uh, you can see that we're going through, coming up with the average fitness, the min and max fitness, uh, and so and tracking uh, kind of the, the standard EHS system statistics along the way of each one of them. The one we care most about is this, this fitness, in particular the fitness max, right? And it looks like uh, we kind of get there um, here. Uh, so 34, oh, it, it didn't like something here. Something was too large. Um, we're still at 83 and change. Uh, it doesn't look like it's going to do a whole lot less than than 80, maybe 84 percent. So we reached um, around 84%, and that's looking like it's kind of stabilized. So at some point, we're going to hit the max number of, of generations, uh, and we'll move on out. And it looks like 84.399 is going to be as good as it gets. Uh, and so... does go through doing the processing and it's again the key concepts here generate that initial population um, calculate how what the fitness is of each of the individuals in that population then do a loop inside of that loop um, you are essentially going to take the top 10 percent have them combine their genes then uh, score each one of the individuals uh, and generally, that's the, the, the pattern we've seen so far is 10% re remain, so the best 10% stick around, the, and the remaining population is populated by 90% uh, new from the generation of those 10%, uh, and crossing them together, uh, combining the genes together, and doing a certain amount of mutation. Uh, and it's, it's kind of like a random walk in that regard, uh, as far as thinking of it in algorithmic terms. Uh, but then it's uh, basically at the end of this, uh, you get a, an accuracy score, uh, and 84.4% uh, is, is pretty pretty good uh, for Titanic. So, uh, moving back to Deliverable 5, uh, and again, Deliverable 5 is about uh, the genetic uh, programming and algorithms, as we've been talking about for some time now. You're a chief data scientist uh, at RDI. You've been uh, tasked to provide information on genetic programming and genetic algorithms. Your company has found that past solutions that were formulated for machine learning uh, have been riddled with human bias uh, with the use of genetic programming. Uh, the, you're hoping that you can do better. So uh, genetic algorithms is a search procedure modeled after natural uh, evolution processes in order to develop uh, a better understanding of genetic algorithms, genetic programmings, uh, you need to develop a report using screenshots from Python where appropriate in a Word document to explain genetic algorithms and genetic programs. Use Python to design and implement an appropriate data structure using a genetic uh, program to implement a given problem. Determine an appropriate performance function for a real world problem using genetic algorithms 
and genetic programming for a real-world problem that exists. Your rubric, uh, uh, your first criteria, a thorough and detailed discussion has been developed that produces examples of genetic algorithms and genetic programs that are present uh, with well-developed and accurate examples. Your second uh, criterion is a thorough and detailed discussion has been uh, designed with an appropriate data structure using genetic program uh, created with Python to implement a given pro a problem uh, is presented and it's uh, well documented and, and developed and accurate. And a thorough and uh, detailed discussion has been developed that determines an appropriate performance function for a real world problem. Uh, and you've got some good uh, uh, examples. Uh, and with that, I've reached the end of my discussion. If you have any questions, uh, let me know. That's what I'm here for. Uh, as always, uh, let me know if you're struggling so I can help. Uh, stay safe, and we'll speak again soon. Thank you.